Today is an update video on all the plants that I've grown from July. You're gonna wanna see this. Hey everybody, and welcome to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. So in this video, I'm going to be doing updates video from my previous video of my July favorites. So you all will get to see the growth that uh, has emerged from them from that time to now. <laughs> Can talk for a quick second. So um, let me grab the plants and then we'll be right back. All right, so the first plant to show you is my Hoya Sarawak Cream. There is that, so those two small growth points that were emerging from the last time you saw it have now become these nice, kind of hard and off yet, like almost hard and off um, foliage and it's emerging with some new little growth right there as well. That's how it looks like. So I'm really happy. I did have it outside for a little bit, but <clears throat> as soon as I get some more soil, I'm going to repot it and place it into um, a brand new, some brand new soil and more than likely trellis it as well. Start to trellis it uh, because once they start to like harden off their like thick stems, then it becomes a little bit harder for the Hoyas to be trellised. And then being, this one being a large leaf Hoya, kind of want to start that early on. Okay. What is the next one? We're gonna go down over here so that way I keep it all like, um, memorized. So the next one is the Hoya Finlaysoniae and that one is outside. So I'll have to insert a clip here for y'all. And as you see here, it really hasn't grown as much. I have kept it outside. Um, there is some sun stressing to it. It is in my little greenhouse, like the four tier one that I have right now. Um, meanwhile, that's what I'm using, like those kind of things um, outside while I construct my temporary um, greenhouse. I'm just using uh, repurposed materials. So I found wood and um, boards and things like that for right now until I can like actually make a plan where I want the greenhouse that I want for the backyard. So um, that's how it looks like. There's really been no, no new growth and um, a lot of people have good success with it. I don't have really good success with the Phenlisonia and the, what was the other one? There was another one that I'm just not good with. I don't know what it is. I I think maybe I am neglecting it too much. That's like my guess, but I'm trying to figure it out and I, I think I've got it now. So let's go on with the next plant. Ooh, this one's a good one. So this one is the Hoya Jade. Okay, <laughs> here we are. I have it in this like drop pot. It's um, just, it just, you just basically like have a, 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 you just basically, it's like a cash pot. So you just place a, a pot, a nursery pot in here. Meanwhile, you can also plant something in there if you like, but um, it has to be really like hardy for the outdoors because if, when you plant things in here, this type of material uh, with ceramic, uh, it, it, it doesn't drain out as fast. So you have to kind of be mindful of that. So if you're someone that is not, um, good with watering I would not recommend this and then just use this like a nursery pot slot it in there because it's still a pretty planter so anyways back to the plant um, this is how it looks like as y'all saw I think it was trellis last time I'm not sure I forgot but there is some good growth on here. I just did a quick wipe down on the leaves because I did have it outside and I just saw a little spider run down and freak me out a little bit. But it's fine, it's a little spider, it's okay. Can't find it now. Okay, well, 
It is what it is. But look at all that new growth and all this little tiny um, growth is also emerging from it. But as I still think it's a really beautiful um, plant. It has this nice like splashiness that emerges throughout some of the foliage. So I think that's really pretty. Um, I just like thick veinage, um, simple, easy Hoyas at times. Um, and like what I told y'all, this is like the thick stems that it has. So now it's gonna be as if I like remove from the trellis, it will be kind of like shaped to this trellis. So it won't be as um, easy to re-trellis if I remove it from the trellis. Does that make sense? But. And that's how this one goes and I really I think this is such a beautiful plant I think more people need this I actually was looking at my notes and from like the what is it 20 so I wrote this I wrote this down when it was this like two years ago so I've had this plant for like two years and I've never really and i've never really appreciated this like beauty that it has personally because i haven't really been able to like just trellis it like this and emerge so i'm, I'm happy that i really got to experience this because this is one of my all-time favorite plants next is the silver dragon so let me go get that one also where do i put you so i currently have oh i need to water you so this is my silver dragon. This is the Alocasia silver dragon. I think this is like one of the really pretty Alocasias. Lately, I've been on a really like heavy Alocasia kick. So I've been buying, trading Alocasias. You see a little like leaf here, but that's damaged. But I think it's due to over underwatering. So I definitely need to give this one a good watering because I've just left it under there without any watering and um, and it's been kind of like getting a little crispy so I need to make sure that I get this one watered so maybe not too much growth because I haven't really been like caring for it like I said I'm not the best at watering at times so that's how it goes but I'm afraid I have re I'm getting it I'm happy I have this a bit more set up so easier so that way plants that like that I need to like immediately get to are set up as with LECA and I'm growing those my growing plants are in LECA so that's how I how I'm going about it which is really working out for me. Next is oh this one's a really good one I think y'all will like it it's right behind me so the next one is this Anthurium Crystal Hope, that is the newest foliage that has emerged from it. Just look at that. How stunning is that foliage? Oh. I currently have it in this glass um, container. It was supposed to be a vase for flowers, but I think I found a better purpose for it because look. It's so pretty. I love that veining on it. Unfortunately, this old leaf did suffer a little bit because I was neglecting it. It was in my grow tent and it was just hidden other plants as it grew. And I really was just not really like, at that point, I just was like so like burnt out <laughs> that I, I needed to put everything in my grow tent and make sure that I it, they survive for at least like a good couple of days while I recovered because sometimes yeah caring for the chickens and the house and the dogs and myself and it's just like life and so it, it gets a little a little a lot sometimes but we like figure our patterns and we make it work but I, this one's really nice I really like this one. 
I'm so excited to see this one grow. I did unfortunately cut off an old leaf, but with that old leaf, um, what to call it? I am, uh, what's it called? I am pressing it. So it's pressed right now in a book. So that way I could like still keep it for my own memory. And then that way, like, it's just like a trial and error kind of situation. So that way, like, whenever I do want to like frame them later on, uh, because I am going to want to frame them when they get nice and big. Um, I, uh, I will know how to do it properly. So. <laughs> this is the Anthurium Crystal Hope. It is crossed with the Crystallinum and Anthurium Hope. So next is the variegated Epipremnum Cebu Blue Ghost. So I did a little chop on him. That's okay. I'm just gonna like, because epipremnums grow fast. And so um, I'm just leaving them in here, in this planter, but there is some new growth emerging from it. As you see, very, very, um, it's emerging very like uh, variegated. So I think it just needed a little cut so it could start to like really branch off its variegation. Um, there is also some little tiny growth point in there as well. So I am excited and I'm really glad that I see some growth on this because I was kind of scared cutting it because I didn't know if it was going to actually like, if I did it right or not. I was like, what if I just messed it up and the variegation is like gone. There is... Can y'all see that? Here's a little tiny prop that I made from it and I put it on my shop. Um, it's pretty well rooted and it's the top cutting so I put it on my shop so that way I could like um, recuperate a little bit on what I spent for this plant so I could buy another plant. <laughs> so but yeah this one's a really uh, this one's a variegated one <clears throat> and then eventually I actually bought like moss pole material so I'll be making my own moss poles and I'll just start to like trellis all of them on there because it's um, it'll be easier and I really want to see their mature foliage like I think that'd be really nice so I am excited for that this is the philodendron swami ferrum again I haven't watered this one either in a little bit so it is a little dry but there is new growth and the growth is emerging the Squamy Ferrum is one of the ones that has the hairy petioles and check out my my upcoming plant vlog because I'll be unboxing one of the another hairy plant in there. So I think it's really cool to like add some of that little spice in there and things that I've been doing so that we all could ch check out what I'm growing for my collection and then also for my shop because I think it's really cool. I, I like that and I get to engage with other like co uh, collectors and small plant shop owners as well. So that's that's why I always like mention my blo my Blossom uh, account. So that way I can like connect with other people and do trades in the future and, or like, you know, pollen. Like I really want to do like, I really want to like learn how to like hybridize Ethereum. So that's what I want to try to do as well. So be learning about that as well. And yeah, I think it's a really nice plant. This one's a Swami Ferrum, one of the hairy plants. It has that nice little hairy petiole. Very cool, huh? And it has like that, the, the podatum type shape foliage. For me, it looks like a tongue, <laughs> like a little tongue or like a long tongue. <laughs> But they look cool. I one of the I think this is like one of the plants that still like holds up on its value, and then also like collecting wise, like people are still like searching for it, still wanting it. I like it. I 
get attached to my plants so like sometimes I'll, a I'll add them to the shop and sometimes I'll take them out because I'm just like I really like that one I might keep it so next is the Parisa Verde and I'm going to include a shot right over here so I propagated my philodendron Parisa Verde I did a whole like good top cut of it and left it basically back to its node and not back to it's like it's stump type so like just like cutting it all the way back down and so that way I could do a trade so I did a trade for a philodendron sunred it's a hybrid type um, philodendron and it has like that kind of like orange like marmalade type foliage so it starts to mature more so that's what what I traded it for but as you see as you see here in this picture it's like back down to a little stump and I don't mind it like I'll, I I just put them back over to my greenhouse area and I just let them like grow there they seem to be doing really well because it does have like a little bit more higher humidity in there and then it's easier for me to control I don't have to like worry about these like I have an area for my own like personal plants that I like to grow myself and sometimes I might throw my shop's plants in there every now and then because like I know like how precise I am with like cleaning and like uh, keeping all the pests and everything um, well balanced, I would say. <laughs> Keep it down to a minimum because there's always going to be pests. You have to be real with yourself. Um, but yeah, the the Paris of Verde is doing well. It's over there in the, the outside in the greenhouse. Um, but yeah, I, I was wondering if anybody else has any like good tips on their Paris of Verde. This one I'm just gonna like let grow, probably put on like a, on a pole and then just have it outside in a big planter uh, eventually. That's just like what I want to eventually like do because I did grow from TC and after I acclimate my plants from TC, most of them just go outside and they seem to be doing well. So some of them do, maybe sometimes one or two might not, but I learned my lesson. <laughs> So next is the Philodendron White Princess, which is really amazing and um, I really like this one, regardless if it becomes has become now common or not, I really like this variegation. I love how it looks like and it's just so pretty and there's also, let me get out of this cash pot, let me get it, so it's so Gorgeous. I'm just gonna like put it in your face so that way you see how pretty it is as well. Look at that variegation. It's just gorgeous. Oh my god. So I'm just pretty much glad also that th this... I thought something popped out of in there. But oh, let me show you this super white, beautiful, creamy, variegated, just full on how gorgeous is that? So pretty, huh? I love this plant. This is one of my favorite plants. This is actually a propagation from the mother plant. And the mother plant is actually outside. Like I told y'all, I'll put a picture here for y'all as well. Um, I just put them outside and they do really well. And I think it's also because due to like the shade, I have like big uh, pecan trees so they do provide some shade which is great uh, it does reduce that like heat like that just beaming sun there's patches of sun that really like keep it lit well lit I that about the um, the garden right now um, but I think that's really like one of the reasons why most of the plants outside do well is because of that shade uh, so we're trying to work on how to like preserve that and also like um, reduce the amount of branches because those pecan trees grow crazy. Um, but yeah, the philodendron white princess is just a gorgeous plant. I love that variegation. It is more easily, um, is now more like it's easier to find now in stores. So I, I think it's great for people. Um, everyone should try this plant out and if you're having really like tr hard trouble with this one I say try to find a way to like amend it 
and if you're to a more like chunky amendment because that's what I done and so um, and if you can't really like mix your own amendment try looking for um, I always recommend people going for Fox Farm Soil. So go for Fox Farm Soil. Um, Espelma is good also, uh, but I, I go for Fox Farm Soil and then just, if you need to, like get Perlite number four and just get it really like well chunky in there and mix it up. That's how kind of like I started off my mix. So chunkier to less chunky and that's because the perlite is expensive <laughs> but you can find it like sometimes like sellers like on Macari or Blossom they're like selling it for four dollars a bag so or something like that so I mean you don't really need like a whole big old bag you know if you're just doing it for one plant or, or a few you know so um, a good handful is, is good um, so that's my tip on how to like really like go about it if you're like the like starting out with your aeroids because a lot of people say chunky and you know like uh chunky means like um cocoa husk perlite some people add leca some people soil so it's just like a balance but also you have to kind of like create that balance for yourself and kind of like learn what's good for you because the ratios are pretty much like uh created for each one's own um, care so so next is the philodendron pasta <laughs> and i'm laughing because like y'all i just propagated all of the plants and there's sometimes i just like am in the mood and i'm just like i just need to propagate it and see what happens maybe i need a couple bucks to recover recoup my spending <laughs> and so, sometimes you know it happens and i overspend on my plant budget but i don't do it often and it's not like crazy where i'm like doing it all the time so i, I know myself <laughs> Anyways, this is how it looks like now. It's just a, a, a good old a good old chunk right now. It's chunky and I am going to remove it from here and I think what I'm gonna do is put it in Leca and have all the growth points come out first and then propagate it. This soil is like that garden soil that really like um, affordable like low budget garden soil and i don't like it because it causes so much fungus gnats it's good but it causes so much fungus gnats so like if you're on a budget that's okay but there's so many fungus gnats in here and i don't like that it gives me the like it makes my skin crawl <laughs> so today i have to dump that outside that's the last plant that I have that is pretty much like fungus net ish most of the other ones are pretty much tame most of the other ones are pretty much tame I've I I use um, sulfur I also do captain jacks I also do um, I have those uh, mosquito pellet things and those do the donuts as well so I have those like placed in like the terrariums or I mix it into the soil. Also, um, uh, diatomaceous earth is good as well for helping reducing it. Um, there's one right there. <laughs> but it, it, it's gonna happen with plants. Um, the important part is that to not carry it out to other people and create an infestation onto their plants. So I always clean my plants to make sure that they are well pretty well cleaned like the roots and everything before swapping or like um selling to other people Ta-da! so when i want to like sell a cutting i want to sell a cutting to you i want to give you something that is like viable good healthy that's that's how i feel like because it, like the way i see it is like i want to it's like if this is what i would like to receive if i was buying something you know um, especially for the price I don't think I'm pricing it that much, like, I think like 30 or something, I don't know. 
Um, but look at those big pe pillowy like leaves. That's really nice. And I learned propagating these first in uh, Leca is good. I do a nice like wiggle test and the way that it's like gripped into the leka the more that it's gripped in there it's the more rooted it is and then you can also tell because of the caterpillar the caterpillar is this red um spiky thing that's protruding that's caterpillar and then the new growth will emerge from there and i see that it's um the tip is like the seal is open, so there's going to be a new um, plant that emerges. But if I do ship this, I, sh I mentioned that I have to like ship it bare root or something like bare root because like <clears throat> I don't I don't want to cut off the foliage for people, and it's like the the chunk the chunk the base of the plant is like this big, so. <clears throat> Uh, no. <laughs> and, or in soil, but it would have to be like in a big box and just like really well packaged. This one's probably going to go because, I don't know, I, I bleached it while I was in the, in the grow tent. I just, I had it under the grow light and just like, I checked for spider bites and everything because this, this plant is prone to uh, a pest pest outbreaks like spider mites and um, drips but uh, there's none that I see I think this is just um, I think this is just uh, bleach and then also because of the EFNs on it so I think the the stickiness I just if the being under the lights it'll like burn it so I think that's what happened so that's why whenever this grow this one emerged, I moved it over to the side. <laughs> but I do have it in to, under the grow light, so it's just I have, I have to have to be mindful and not keep it under there for too long. But this is a wonderful plant, and I love it. I have a plant swap next week, so. That's exciting. I really wanted to. I really wanted to. I really want to, um, like, sell some plants and get some things going. Some projects that I really want to keep going because, as you see, like, the more plants I sell, it uh, it all just kind of like works and more things are done and organized and um, I work things back into the the plants and the business and the chickens. So I definitely want to get like new. And what I really want to do is, 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 is like that greenhouse. Once I get that going, it's just, it's going to be good. Especially for this winter. I don't know what's going to happen, y'all. We're, we're, we're in Texas and we had that crazy winter storm, but I don't know. And then right now it's like 106. Jesus. I have to like keep... Um, and I on my chickens and I give them like ice and also like electrolytes so that way they're good and healthy but let me get on to the next one is the philodendron, philodendron gloriosum so here we are this is the gloriosum at least one of them there is like a f there is a few around so there's this one, there's this little chunk that I grew from a, a little propagation and it has like a new growth emerging from it. Now I'll place like pictures of the other ones. Um, there's one right here and that, that's the one I keep outside in the, um, it's our driveway but I, um, I use it for plants because it's just like the lighting is good there and I could keep plants there so. That's where it's at. It's on my uh, plant stand over there where I keep all my other personal plants there as well. <laughs> but I have that one and then, which one else? 
Oh, and then I have this little one as well. I'll put a little picture here. Um, that one is a tiny little one that I propagated off of, off of it. And then I sold a couple of cuttings to other people as well. I think like in the Midwest or something like that. So I'm really happy that other people got to experience those plants. The next is the Gloriosa Zero. And I made two propagations of it from that one plant that I, I was showing you all last time. So I made this one from that top propagation. I think I need to keep a, a, a thing on there to keep it like upright it's doing well so one of the, the it's this is one of them and it has like a new growth point in on it as well as you see this little green dot that's a growth point that's where the new growth will emerge from it um, it's like a nice little chunk and then this is a that's the bottom though no, that that is that is a mid and then this is the top as you see, the top has the caterpillar in it as well. I'll have to try to see if I can get closer to y'all. Okay, there we go. As y'all see there, that is a caterpillar, the new growth point that will emerge from the plant. So, these are my two props. And right now I have them in Vika. I'll probably tra I'll transfer them over to soil later on. Uh, but this is like the mother plant over here. So this is my mother plant of the zebra. I just have it over here recuperating. So I'm really happy that I got to uh, propagate. I'm really happy that I got to propagate it and able to get two out of it and because I know I love this plant, and once this heals up and does well, I'm, I'll just put it on its like forever planter and propagate later on. <laughs> but I'm happy other people are going to be able to experience this plant as well because this is one of like one of my favorite plants. Nice big pillowy leaves. You see there, it has that nice dark foliage, so it's really nice. It's just a excellent plant to have and obtain the. The foliage gets a bit bigger than this. I think like maybe two times the size of this. So, oh man. Okay, so next is the Camprey Lynette. This is a philodendron that grows um, kind of like in a bird shape nest pattern. So this is how it looks like. It has really good textured um foliage and this plant just gets bigger and bigger i did have to cut off some of the older foliage i did overwater it for one point because i left it sitting in water we all make mistakes look we're not perfect <laughs> so that's what happened but i was managed i managed to rescue it and save it i dried up the soil a little bit replacing it outside in some like bright shady area like covered um i think the heat outside just kind of dried up the soil so it really saved up this 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 the heat is like a blessing and a curse <laughs> so use it at your own discretion right <laughs> but this is oh. I just love this plant. Really, ex I really am excited to, to own this plant. I like unique growth patterns and foliage uh, for my aerates and different types of plants. So I like how this one was easily attainable by one of my friends uh, from her plant shop. So I'm really excited for that. I think it just needs a really good heavy fertilizer so that way it keeps growing faster and bigger and longer. <laughs> I'll have to insert a picture for this next one because it's huge and I cannot <laughs> grab, go pick it up easily. So this one right here is the Philodendron Gigantianum. Um, I think I've mentioned before, this plant gets super huge. And so as you see here, it's it's big. It's 
it's it actually got so big i had to propagate it so i'll insert a picture here of this little propagation with our little propagation of the propagation that i had to make uh of it it was just huge and it was just getting bigger and i don't have a bigger plant pot for it so <clears throat> I guess getting another one is, is, is the solution here. <laughs> so I, as you see here from this picture, it's just grown large and it has like that nice, like huge green foliage. There is a variegated version of it and I'll probably get it sometime soon or another, I don't know. I'm really crazy for like big plants and especially if they're variegated, it's, it's like, you know so i like that a lot um but i definitely am excited to own this plant this is this plant was actually gifted to me by a friend of mine from one of the groups that i'm in uh he came to my uh my my plant swap one day and then gifted these to me so i was just really happy to get, get them they're huge plants Next is the oh, next is the philodendron snowdrift, and I am excited because this is one of my like all-time favorite plants. I've always wanted this plant for so long, ever since I first saw it. I think I saw this one at Kaylee Ellen. She was the one uh, benching this like two, three years ago. You know, I couldn't afford it. It was like th th crazy amounts of money. I don't know. This is the Philodendron Snowdrift. Look how pretty that foliage is. Like, you can't tell me this is not a pretty plant. Like, this is what I mean about, like, unique type variegation. Um, ooh, we need water. <laughs> um, unique type variegation. Um, and... I'm, I'm learning how to use Leica, okay? Um, and the petioles are this bright, like, neon pink, orange. Just gorgeous, like, that's so beautiful. So, you know me, I'm excited to eventually propagate it so I could probably do a trade or just make another one. Because it would be a really nice, like, um, plant to own as a double i i like that um i'm not i'm those type of people that would like when i like a plant i will make a double a triple a quadruple i would just keep on making them uh it's because i just like it and i want to see more of them around uh but this is like one of my favorite plants and that new mm, just so pretty who told you you could be so pretty So spectacular. So I definitely am going to have to water it. I'm gonna leave it over here somewhere so I can remember to get it. Uh, but that's the Philodendron Snowdrift. Next is my Monstera tie. Um, as y'all remember, I had this little tiny tie over here. I've been rescuing it and, and growing it and eventually I just uh, figured I'd rather sell it because it's such a tiny little thing. I have another one, so I was just like really not like um, feeling like too attached to that one. So I, I even though it didn't really, it really have like some nice variegation, but I think the other one has variegation, better variegation. So I grew it out to a nice good uh, uh, propagation for the person, and um, I sold it to them, and they got they got it. And so I'm really excited to see like that they got. They, they were able to like have it because they were like, oh, I couldn't because, you know, like they were trying to grow one from like TC and I don't think they could have, they, theirs didn't make it um, from what they were telling me. Or was that someone else? But that's, that's, <laughs> that's where it went. It went to a new home. So, um, little tie is gone. But to let me show you the bigger tie. This is the other monster tie constellation that I had. It's three leaves, really nice. The first, where'd it go? The first foliage wasn't really like spectacular, so there's nothing to like look at. 
the second one was okay as well so i was like okay maybe this one didn't have any consistent good like variegation but the third one looked so nice y'all look at that that is such pretty variegation i really really love it i'm so excited to have it i have it in leka because um i don't know it just this is what has been working for me i I don't know like maybe the soil was like contaminating the roots too much and that's probably why some of those um, acclimation TCs that I did didn't work out but I have it in my grow tent um, I have them all in like um, those clear containers and I just have them in there and I use so I use I water them with super thrive so that's where they st they stand right now. I don't have any fertilizer. I usually use uh, the Fox for Fox Farm Grow Big fertilizer. And that's that's what it's called. So I use that one and the other ones. But I might I might be switching to some other ones that I found because they are larger and not as expensive. No offense to like sometimes you just kind of have to like give and take. You know, at least for like the time being um, because I really want to like try this like like a thing out but just like having a little bottle of super thrive and then that tiny bottle of Fox farm it doesn't really work out for me so I think I might need to like switch my switch them to like the different fertilizers I'll put a picture here for what I'm talking about you can find them on Amazon so I'll be using that that but I think it, I think all my plants need to be like fertilized right now and they uh, are not receiving it so but this is a monster tie I really like it I'm so happy that I have this one y'all <laughs> and I'm, this is a really gorgeous plant I'm excited to finally have it I had one last year but it died so and then um, for the last plant is a philodendron jerry horn. Actually, I'll propagate it um, and then I'll, pot, I'll probably put it in a bigger planter and um, leave this one alone if I do propagate it. But I'm happy that I'm able to like grow it this much because I only I bought it from a little cutting. I might be able to find a picture and if I do, I'll put it here for y'all. But as you see here, it was like a little tiny cutting and now it's a plant. And so <laughs> I, um, it, it always like, it always trips me out that I can grow a plant from a cutting. So it's, to me, it's magic. I don't know. We're, that's the, ma I think that's the magic about being human is like the way we get to interact with things and be able to like create such great, such amazing things like plants and learn something new and share with others like that's amazing like if most of my collection if it wasn't for my friends um, and I trading with one another it, I don't think I would be able to have the pasta zanum um, uh, some really cool Hoyas that I have like the splash I got from a trade from one of the, the people from the group at the swap that I went in, went to, so it's cool. Like I really appreciate everybody just being like that thoughtful and kind and training with me because I love plants, and my mission as a plant collector is to collect more unique, funky plants. I really am trying to avoid importing right now, so that's not what I want to do. Maybe something that I might be doing is like wholesale eventually for my shop later on i don't know but i kind of just like taking it really slow and just like selling on blossom and makari so um, that's how i want to approach it because i i'm just not ready to like really dive deep into it like as a shop and like commit all of, like those really like long hours and I'm not the best at being organized, but I have my organization ready if that does ever have to happen. But overall, I appreciate y'all like sticking through this long video. I know I ramble a lot, 
and that's what I like to do. I like to talk about my plants. I like to ramble a little bit and just like just hang out. And uh, I feel like that's something that I want to do, and I like doing it. So <laughs> why not do it for my channel, right? Um, I hope you all enjoy this video. If you really, if you like this kind of uh, videos let me know down below I am thinking about just kind of like doing stuff like this and just like hanging out and talking about my plants uh, the next one I'm thinking about doing is like showing you all my all my Hoya collect from my Hoya collection uh, is that if that's something that you think that's really you might be you might enjoy watching and learning about um, let me know down below in the comments and if you do thank you so much for to and, it, and if you are new and have and I and if you are new and and if you are new and subscribe to my channel, thank you so much. I enjoy it and hope to see y'all some more. I'll have a great one. Peace. See you all. No, I'm not an alien. Alright, I hope y'all enjoyed this. Bye everyone. Take care.